ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿಪುರಾ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವ ಬಾದರಾಗಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನೆ ವ್ಯೋಮವ್ಯಾಪ್ತೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಗುಕಾರಸ್ತ್ವಂಧಕಾರೋ ವೈ ರುಕಾರಸ್ತನ್ನಿವರ್ತಕ ಅಂಧಕಾರ ನಿರೋಧಿ ಗುರುರಿತ್ಯಭಿಧೀಯತೆ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರ ವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ವೃತ್ತೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಾತ್ವಿಕ್ ಸಾತ್ವಿಕ ವೃತ್ತಿ ರಾಜಸಿಕ ವೃತ್ತಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ತಾಮಸಿಕ ವೃತ್ತಿ ದಿಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಪ್ಯಾರಲಲಿ ಅಲಾಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ what is happening at the macro level a very ingenious uh, structure of these verses if you will just stop and look very beautiful first what is happening in one's own antakarana heart and mind anger fear greed attack or something calm dull inertia listlessness all these things are th- th- this array of things are there and this array of things from the macro standpoint of ishvara srishti i- is very much interconnected the array of human vrittis i mean even dogs have th- th- tamasik vritti and all that so jeevas vrittis on the level of the individuals antakarana on the micro level is very much connected to informed by affected you know and affecting what is that the macro level of ishvara's creation ishvara srishti includes the vrittis at the level of the individual mind heart antakarana whatever you want to say this is something which is uh, uh, an ingenious setup and it is very very important to look at because all the emotions the whole gamut of emotions in the human mind this whole thing is included in ishvara's creation this is the first observation we can get from looking at these uh, verses that juxtapose the individual mind along with what is happening i- at the macro level of the creation very beautiful juxtaposition so the first thing we understand is that these emotions that one is feeling uh, is no, you know these emotions that one is experiencing is not happening in a vacuum it is part of a large setup and what kind of a setup number 2 the setup is an intelligent setup <laughs> why sachidanandatvat because it is it is all knowledge 
it exists ishvara is that's why the first two letters of ishvara in english i s is okay that's how we know ishvara is and so ishvara is ishvara is all knowing all knowledge and then what ishvara limitless ananda ananta and so then the the gamut of human emotions whether they are sattvic rajasic tamasic etc they are all included in this intelligent creation that serves a purpose what is the purpose of the creation if one asks we can say that the purpose is for the karma to be exhausted karma of who the jeevas of course but this is just a provisional explanation what is the permanent explanation <laughs> what is the purpose of the jagat what jagat that is the permanent explanation <laughs> where is it what jagat <laughs> jayate is born gachati is gone that is the definition of the jagat and that is where vidyaranya wants you to go but provisionally it is we, we have to get there through the rungs of the vedantic methodology methodological ladder one by one slowly and so the first thing to understand is that i am not alone with my emotions i'm not the only one feeling like this that's why it is divided into three and how nice it would be and it's actually quite objective to just say i'm having a ghora attack right now that is kind of objective <laughs> today i feel ta- tamasic the mind is under the influence of tamas this is the, the when you say that you are not feeling tamasic at all you are actually in the position of the sakshi observing the uh, these vrittis so the vrittis exist side by side in the structure of this uh, 15th chapter along with the cosmology of the creation and it is not del- it is not you know it is not unplanned it is very deliberate and methodical very beautiful it is deliberate and intentional because the panchadashi kara wants us to understand that the two are happening you know e- side by side the two are happening side by side so the first thing is that the the vrittis are not coming out of some other source than brahman the source of the vrittis uh, is also brahman itself sarve as i quoted last uh, last time sarvesham buddhau raga dveshau vyavasthitau in every buddhi raga and dvesha is given but along with that is given the ability to transform it this is very important to to assimilate second thing is that there is some volition in creation there is a planning there is a deliberation and there is a will whose will ishwara's will obviously that's how each person is married to another person there is some ishwara's will there no 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 i chose my life partner myself maybe people will say but why this person <laughs> there is ishwara's will why not someone else there is ishwara's will in the place that you are from how come you are from this place and not that place oh there is a series of accidents and before i was born my parents moved here then you keep asking why did your parents move here oh you know that's another interesting story because they got a job why did they get a job here well because their friends moved here and then there was this new um, company or factory what have you that was opening up and then they they said come along there is a place for you here 
why did the company open up oh that's also interesting because the company was supposed to be located somewhere else at the last minute they could not get the permit and they thought it's better to move here because they they were not allowed to open somewhere else there it was just too much red tape why was there so much red tape well that's because the official who was in charge got uh, you know replaced by another really finicky person who was all into who was a rule follower and who was just a troublemaker where will the story end will be here <laughs> for the next uh, how many ever days are left from the retreat will be here the whole time this shows when you cannot uh, when there is just serendipity after serendipity after serendipity then we understand serendipity is yet one more name of bhagavan <laughs> no coincidence we say coincidence it is bhagavan that is another name of B- bhagavan you can say serendipity namaha <laughs> this is what you can do you can uh, craft your own uh, namas namaha unto serendipity namaha unto coincidence because there is no coincidence it is bhagavan it is the presence of bhagavan and so the juxtaposition of these vrittis along with the cosmology of creation of how this one brahman as though quote and quote quote and quote heavy quotes became many is is to show that the macro creation or rather the macro manifestation or the projection of bhagavan includes my bad mood which is a very very wonderful way to look at it because your bad mood is bhagavan's fault which is kind of nice it gives some inner space there is a connection that's why it is divided into three so that it's assimilated easily so this is something which is very marvelous then the second thing which is unstated or understated here which will come out later a little more is this that bhagavan is cre- busy creating this universe manifesting this universe at the macro level and at the micro level the jiva is also busy creating its own srishti its own projections and what is the material for ishwara's projection we know this because we have been studying vedanta for quite some time now what is the material for ishwara's projection even the bible says the lord created this world from nothing we add a little word after nothing else <laughs> nothing else other than himself herself endowed with maya shakti the creation is just ishvara alone so whatever we call creation is just ishvara through many name the formless nameless ishvara as though taking on many names many forms the jiva who is who is really ishvara but endowed with a dunce cap agnyadham <laughs> goes it in the corner <laughs> jiva is an idiot wearing a long dunce cap sitting in the corner and feels disempowered insecure alienated from ishvara lonely fearful in competition with other jivas because how dare you get ahead when i'm still behind i'm also going to get ahead <laughs> even though i have to make off with your head i want to get ahead this is the, this is the jiva so the jiva is also busy ishvara is busy manifesting this universe and jiva is busy doing what also manifesting a parallel universe the raw material for ishvara's universe is himself the raw material of jiva's universe is also itself its own memories its own desires 
its own disappointments and its own distortions. So there are two kinds of creation going on at, uh, in tandem Ishvara Srishti and then Jeeva Srishti Ishvara's manifestation of the Jagat and you know the laws of karma the physiological laws the anatomical laws the law of dharma which is the other side of the law of karma everything this is Ishvara's Srishti made up of laws and who is the jiva the one that comes under the spell of these laws the one that comes under the spell of these laws is the jiva and therefore what <laughs> therefore there is a very very nice uh, um, the word I'm looking for is that you know dance going on Ishvara's dance Nataraja Lord Nataraja's dance beautifully choreographed never out of step never out of tune infallibly done dance and the jiva at best has two left feet you can say or <laughs> the jiva is the afore the jiva's dance is like the aforementioned cat dancing on a hot tin roof a dance of despair and subjectivity and helplessness therefore this alienation is as though it appears real because of the dunce cap what is the dunce cap the dunce cap is maya who has who dared to put the dunce cap on the jiva maya in the form of all ajnanam and the same maya put the cap a wizard's cap a druid's cap on Ishvara same Maya the wise sage cap Ishvara is wearing and the Jiva the same Maya is wearing a cap of ignorance Vedanta Shastra is <laughs> taking off the dunce cap the study of Vedanta is removing the dunce cap dunce cap is avarna which makes me think that I am alienated I am unloved I am unwanted I am a nobody and therefore these vrittis become very interesting like like you know like the the thermometers to see how to placate this samsara jvara the fever of samsara how to overcome it and what is the what is the paracetamol that you can take all this will be revealed so this is like a the, the presence especially of the the rajas vritti and the tamas vritti are the litmus tests to coming back to a sense of connection and walking back from this alienation this alienation comes from subjectivity misery centered on the self comes from wrong understanding of oneself fear sorrow resentment grudges and opposite of bigness smallness all come from a hurt place in the heart that becomes the raw material the raw material is oneself 
one's own unconscious churns out these vrittis <laughs> nobody loves you nobody cares nobody wants you see you are still insecure y- you can marry 10 times but you will still be insecure which is actually a very vedantic thing but here it is said out of despair <laughs> this this is the jeeva's condition the unconscious mind is doing its own vikshepa so the, at the individual level the individual's vikshepa is from the unconscious mind and there is a reason why it is called the unconscious mind because the early hurts pains and sorrows are all hidden not owned up much less resolved this is a mechanism a very healthy mechanism me- mechanism for the child to grow up unscathed because it doesn't have the emotional stability and the mental maturity to be able to process this hurt early childhood hurts pains sorrows whatever they just come out later on when finally one is in a relationship of trust meaning one is feeling safe enough to feel unsafe then these vrittis come out <laughs> so then the vikshepa for the individual is one's own subjective overlay over ishvara srishti distorting it as though we are in an amusement park of mirrors i mean it's nice to go to disney land and then see yourself wavy all wavy and in one you look upside down in one you look so wide all these things kind of nice to laugh at it but if that is one's vision of the world then it can become very very traumatic and frightening so this is the vikshepa the individual's projection just like at the level at the macro level there is ishwara's vikshepa maya shakti's vikshepa in the form of the one becoming as though many here also the jeeva's vikshepa is the a, 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 what does it do it eclipses ishwara's world ishwara's creation creating a toxic radiation etc where there is none it eclipses it through its own distorted vision based on what and uh, we know one's hurt and pain from the unconscious that's why it is called unconscious one doesn't know that there are hidden triggers which are ready to climb into the uh, into the uh, you know uh, climb on to the rope of the uh, ghora vritti and mudha vritti and like a trapeze artist swing from one terrible vritti to another one doesn't know this and that's why the unconscious is the avarna at the individual level at the collective level avarna is not you know coming under the spell of agnyanam agnyanam is the collective avarna the individual avarna is the unconscious ishvara's creation ishvara's manifestation is the vikshepa at the collective or the macro level and at the micro level it is the creation of a parallel reality which leads to sorrow and the ingredients for this parallel reality of course is the unprocessed hurts and pains from a long time ago which are triggered in the present you know as it is in any adhyasa smriti roopa paratra darshanam so paratra darshanam means seeing something that is not there elsewhere so the hurts from what i call the primary scare givers is now superimposed on to just a person walking by some memory is triggered some pain is activated without even knowing how or why 
and the unconscious mind uses the ghora and the mudha vrittis to to travel from the unconscious to the conscious mind <laughs> this is what happens very very interesting very beautiful to look at it like this that is why the panchadashi kara if you see you know go, jumps frog leaps from talking about the vritti in the mind of the individual to straight away talking about the mm, talking about ishwara's projection this is exactly why so then if we look at the projection everything is brahman everything is satchidananda everything exists because you can objectify it you can see it it exists sat is there it is knowable chit is there and then it is delightful that we saw either by its presence or its absence ananda is there all of those things are there then how come if i am ananda <laughs> then <laughs> why is it not coming out <laughs> why is it so hidden only ghora and mudha come out to play where oh where are you satvika vritti where are you what are you doing how can you be absent show your face and panchadashi kara says something says that everything is satchidananda or satyam gyanam anantam all right however if you look at a rock and he will say this you know in his own elegant way this is just an introduction to this whole section that we are about to enter if you look at a rock the rock is also satchidananda the rock is rock the, the sat aspect again the word aspect is within many quotes okay a brahman doesn't have aspects but then we are constrained to use this word so the 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 sat standpoint pro, seen from the standpoint of the sat which is brahman the rock is in place rock sat yes rock is but it cannot advertise its presence if i say hello rock how is your day going it it cannot respond otherwise if you, you know, it cannot respond at all why sukshma sharira abhavat the absence of a subtle body which can sense all these things and which can respond which can interact is not there in the rock rock just is is there that's all sat is there in the rock chitta and ananda are there but the it the rock is unable to broadcast itself its presence and the rock is also unable to tell you its story a long time ago billions of years ago i was a forest now what i am petrified pun intended that that's what the rock would say if it had a human mind but it doesn't have sukshma shariram so it just sits there does not say hello back so if i ask the rock are you here do you exist it cannot broadcast its existence because there is no sukshma sharira then so that takes care of chit the chit aspect or from the chit standpoint the rock is unable to express its chitness okay is that a word now it is so the rock is unable to express its chit swabhava what about ananda that too it is unable to express it cannot say i rock it cannot say that <laughs> it cannot say that you can say that 
it cannot say i rock and so this uh, this little introduction gives us a clue about the expression of brahman even though brahman is there fully without any trace of, uh, not a single piece of brahman if we can call it that is missing sat is there chit is there ananda is there but their manifestation of the chit and ananda is not there uh, all the time the manifestation level at the level of manifestation the chit and ananda need some special equipment to be to be manifest and that special equipment is the subtle body with the sense organ or uh, all these things organs of action sense organs mind buddhi ahankara all these things the ability to uh, pick up uh, uh, certain impressions the ability to respond the subtle aspect is not there now replace the rock with tamasik vritti <laughs> because they are alike <laughs> they are alike one is sitting there checked out and listless rejected upset feeling alienated since it is a human body the sat aspect of course is there just like in the rock chit aspect is also there because at least for the name sake the person has sukshma sharira even though they they, they are not in touch with it chit is also there because if you ask them do you exist they will say barely but that means they do exist so chit is also there where is brahmananda where is brahmananda that is also there but just like in the rock which is incapable of broadcasting chit and ananda the rock like tamasik vritti Uh, the the one in the the spell of the rock like tamasik vritti is likewise unable to manifest ananda satchit is default for all jivas it is there ananda to manifest the ananda you need something more you need a trained disciplined and a satvik mind otherwise the ananda lies hidden it's not that the ananda is not there ananda is there but it refuses to come out the ghora vritti the terrifying rajasik vritti is a car for certain things from the unconscious to be brought out the tamasik vritti is another vehicle which carries the 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 whole passengers such as the grudges the resentment the sorrow the despair those are the passengers of what of the vritti which is called tamasa then for ananda to come out you need an appropriate vehicle the appropriate vehicle to drive ananda from wherever it is in and through all these eclipsing effects of the ghora vritti and the tamasa vritti is is the satvika vehicle so the sattva the, the sattva becomes a vehicle to that carries this vritti that carries the shanta vritti the, the, you know it it carries this the happiness it carries the ananda it carries that so therefore sat chit is there in the rajasik vritti but ananda is eclipsed sat chit is there in the tamasik mind in a mind enveloped by tamas ananda is eclipsed 
for ananda to be broadcast there should be room in the mind and that room is created with the with the broom of sattvika and uh, the the entire 17th chapter of the bhagavad gita and the uh, uh, the, the first portion of the 18th chapter of the bhagavad gita talk about this talk about this threefold division of mother maya that has blessed this universe and has also at the same time created an entrapment how because all beings come under the spell of these three vrittis and yet arjuna is told in the second chapter traigunya vishaya vedaha nistraigunyo bhava he arjuna nirdvandvo nitya satvastha niryoga kshemah atmavan bhava o arjuna this whole world is full of the three gunas you are now ready to drop these gunas drop these gunas transcend the gunas easier said than done how do you transcend the gunas <laughs> well at one point you are telling me everything is affected by the guna then you are telling me transcend the gunas <laughs> in stages cognitively cognitively and step by step so what is the first step catch hold of sattva that is the first step how to catch hold of sattva because sattva is is proliferates in the whole universe you look at movies there are sattvic movies <laughs> rajasic movies tamasic movies you look at food there is sattvic food which is fresh organic and if you are a macro person or if you are a raw food person then you know you can graze in the front lawn for breakfast and then graze in the backyard for lunch very very sattvic so food fresh food sattvic certain vegetables sattvic certain vegetables which 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 have a strong odor uh, like uh, what is that called um, garlic etc tamasic it makes the the ingestion of garlic all the time these kinds of garlic like vegetables you know what they do is they make one uh, lazy and resentful of course garlic is medicine that's why it is medicine it's not supposed to be food it's uh, supposed to be taken once in a while if we you know somebody has cholesterol problem something that is okay as medicine it is okay because it comes from nature so food is also there and then what is rajasic food described in the bhagavad gita it is all too spicy too hot too everything too much too salty rajasic food and then <laughs> the amasic food is there such a thing yes in fact we have a rhyme for it peas pudding hot peas pudding cold peas pudding in the pot 9 days old this is the amasic <laughs> the amasic food <laughs> this is what it is and lord krishna also talks about it yatayamam gatarasam gatayama means from which all the uh, all the nutrition and all the the uh, the ojas uh, uh, of the food the uh, the the shine the nourishment of the food the very being of the food has departed you know when the fridges first made their appearance in india the the people who were uh, uh, elderly when the fridge came to the houses they would say this is a leftover box they would say this is a leftover box i have one great aunt who is 102 years old 
and <laughs> she even to this day she will not even uh, uh, eat anything out of the fridge because that is sick food and then if she has to cross a fridge let's say she's coming from that room to this room and in the in the middle room there is a fridge okay so <laughs> she would get a little <laughs> jambu a pot of water <laughs> and sprinkle <laughs> and come because it's all it's all not to be even <laughs> you, even the the fridge is you know the tabasic food is so contaminating you cannot even walk past the fridge which which is just a box which is a trunk of leftover food <laughs> and here we cannot even imagine our life without fridge now and then in addition to fridge we have freezer and in that freezer will be a month long uh, you know set of lunches and dinners <laughs> in many freezers and so all this lord krishna says what you put in <laughs> comes out in the form of speech in the form of temperament somebody wrote a book you are what you eat it must have been based on the bhagavad gita you see uh, we didn't have a concept we still don't have a concept of intellectual property rights we don't have a concept oh my knowledge is your knowledge your knowledge is my knowledge come let us all enjoy together what's the big deal and then that proved very heavy for us because now we are scrambling to copyright each and every yoga asana <laughs> each and every yoga asana because some people are saying oh it came to be in a meditation and uh, you know this is and they feel like they can they can and they will copyright it so we have to scramble now the indian government is becoming little more clever after this this happened after basmati became texmati there is, <laughs> there is one rice called texmati it is there in america this is uh, basmati grown in texas and then copyrighted and so this is you know so people write books like you are what you eat you are what you drink all these things this is all come from the bhagavad gita 17th and 18th chapters so we make diligent mindful disciplined and conscious choices for what for everything whatever you ingest with the sense organs with the mouth with the nose with the eyes ears everything you choose the sattvic choice there are plenty there are plenty of alternatives to choose that which is sattvic in your entertainment choose sattvic entertainment in your in your food choose sattvic food in your speech choose sattvic speech in your pujas also cho- choose the sattvic form of puja what is the sattvic form of puja the regular 16 step puja that we do end with offerings etc oh then is there a rajasik puja you bet says <laughs> lord krishna in the bhagavad gita the rajasik puja will be done to show off one's wealth for example invite a lot of people have a big homa not for the sake of shraddha or bhakti or to help people or for world peace no <laughs> the homa is only for your ego to grow oh is there a tamasic puja yes says lord krishna these are the people who invoke disembodied entities and try to get things out of them how terrible even after dying these people don't have uh, you know peace some peace and they are immediately harnessed to to serve the use of, of the living to serve some purpose for the living not nice this is a tamasic form of puja lord krishna says even in the giving of dana charity seva uh, service there is there are there is a sattvic way of doing it there is a rajasic way of doing it and there is a tamasic way of doing it datavyam yad iti danam tat sattvikam uchyate this needs to be given because somebody is in need and i seem to have the the, the resources this is a sattvic dana it is objective 
what is rajasik dana <laughs> what will i get out of it <laughs> so sometimes you know mm, if you if somebody is building a temple or something like that then there are gradations of givers you give this much money and you will get a silver pot you give this much money and then you will get a gold pot so the rajasik person is reading the fine print which level what will i get and then will i be mentioned in the list of donors this is called rajasik giving finally what is tamasik giving tamasik giving is out of resentment grudges fear of something bad happening all this is tamasik giving so this is this is an invitation to make very mindful choices catch hold of sattva wherever possible and even in in the expression of ananda there is this sattvic type of ananda rajasik type of ananda and then tamasik type of ananda discussed in the uh, you know in the beginning uh, beginning i mean beginning means 18 chapter is a long chapter verse 36 and all there thereabouts uh, the, these the, these three uh, kinds of uh, happinesses are discussed so kham tu idanim trividham shrunu there are three forms of happiness and then uh, uh, the first one is a satvik happiness and what is the satvik happiness yat tat agre vishamiva pariname amritopamam in the beginning there is hard work and it looks like very difficult it's look it 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 seems as bitter as poison but the hard work pays off and at the end it is it is like nectar amritam this is the satvik form of happiness which is dharmically earned at great lengths at great efforts to follow dharma even when it is inconvenient and at the cost of great sacrifice we have to give up a lot of things that's okay for the person in sattva for the dharmic satvic person this is okay and then what is this uh, you know what is the uh, what is the rajasik happiness <laughs> and uh, the rajasik happiness it will be nice in the beginning and then uh, and then what afterwards it will be difficult it will be wonderful in the beginning because the rajasik person in impulsiveness and impatience cuts corners does not uh, you know does not do things properly and then uh, this is what happens so and then is into a contact high is, is the rajasik person is interested in the instant happiness coming out of contact with the sense objects vishayendriya samyogat yattad agre amritopamam so in the beginning when you manage to get the uh, subject one self with the object of delight it is wonderful pariname <laughs> vishamiva but at the end it is injurious to health etc you overindulge and then tat sukham rajasam smritam this is the rajasik way of seeking happiness and then what is the tamasik uh, happiness form of happiness yad agre cha anubandhe cha from the start to the finish <laughs> sukham moham atmanah one is deluded about what is this sukha what is ananda and so what do they cho- choose nidra sleep that's the only form of ananda they know the one who is mired in tamas nidra alasya alasya means what the uh, you know the mm, laziness slothfulness nidra alasya and pramada pramada means uh, uh, neglect neglect of duties what needs to be done what needs to be done I- is not done and elsewhere uh, lord krishna describes the tamasic 
people of predominantly tamasic vritti to be uh, what is that to be the greatest of procrastinators dirgha sutratvam <laughs> dirgha sutri means procrastinating all the time oh tomorrow tomorrow and it never gets done why because we all know tomorrow never comes so this is uh, this is something which is uh, very interesting so there is a lot of space uh, to cultivate the satvika vritti there is a lot of room lot of opportunity so what is this satvika lifestyle and satvika vritti satvika vritti first of all is one that is married to dharma dharma becomes the first purushartha for whom they are well on the road to developing a satvika vritti dharma is the first purushartha and dharma is something that has to be accomplished that's why it is called purushartha sarvaihi purushaihi arthyate that which is desired by all people this is what is called purushartha but i don't particularly want to be dharmic <laughs> that may be true <laughs> but you want other people to be dh- dharmic towards you is it not yeah you want them to open the door for you vishesha dharma when you pass through if you drop something you want them to pick it up and if you lose something you want them to you commiserate and say oh how sad this is this shouldn't have happened to you where did you lose the money you want them to be helpful you don't want to be defrauded you don't want to be cheated out of your possessions you don't want to be lied to you don't want to be hurt so indirectly you want dharma and the only way of getting dharma is through being dharmic yourself that is why dharma is the first purushartha i always used to wonder because nobody uh, you know when you look around in the universe and you read some terrible news so many people made off with so many things and in india some horrible news things are coming news items you know the uh, uh, every week they are catching people with this uh, you know very expensive uh, covid uh, medicine uh, rem something rem desivir rem desivir vials and who is stealing them doctors nurses nurses aides unfortunately and they're taking them somewhere and trying to sell it in some uh, you know underground market and getting caught because the police in india are always one step ahead so then the police some of the people in the police force their only job is to pose as potential buyers of this in in the underground market and that's how they have rounded up these people this is all you know this is all adharmic this is all very difficult and so but but uh, the people in whose name this prescription was there they are lying there out of breath dying and having all kinds of complications from covid and here these people are trying to make a uh, fast money and so therefore this uh, satvik lifestyle means dharma should be the first purushartha so when we see things like this and hear these things in the newspaper one wonders where is dharma but the desire for dharma is inbuilt in every human heart it is definitely there and then that has to be cultivated dharma becomes a parameter through which i make decisions if something transgresses dharma i don't do it and what is this dharma you can think of it as a universal matrix of norms universal because it truly is nobody wants to be hurt nobody wants to be cheated you ask somebody in china they will say no you ask somebody in india they will say no you ask somebody in australia they will also say no that is why dharma is universal samanya dharma it is not 
constrained by time or space to kill somebody was always wrong no matter in which time point in history to cheat somebody was always wrong will continue to be wrong this is samanya dharma which one must follow in order to grow to be a sattvic person and then there is vishesha dharma because dharma is alive it is not static dharma comes alive according to space and place and time deshatah kalatah the adharma is articulated in different space and time differently there are cultural differences like so many you know examples we can give when i was growing up you know all the children in india were told don't talk when you eat <laughs> quiet sit quietly and eat don't talk when you eat and then i came to america and then the people would say let's talk this over for lunch <laughs> this is vishesha dharma <laughs> and so the first few lunches that i had with people in america they must have been very disappointed because i did not say a word because i was not trained that way then slowly i said oh okay <laughs> this is what they are expecting me to talk <laughs> they want me to say something okay this is the culture here and it's not harmful to follow the culture especially if it is not trans- transgressing the universal dharma and uh, so then you say okay this is what the person expects either i say i will not come for lunch i will meet after lunch <laughs> or if i end up going for lunch i talk this is you know this is all this is vishesha dharma vishesha dharma another stock example of vishesha dharma you know uh, ahimsa paramo dharma you know, ahimsa is the is the best and the most highest form of dharma non violence and yet you see the surgeon wielding a very big scalpel going into the operating theater and then what cutting through somebody's stomach why <laughs> it is causing injury yes it is causing injury but the stomach is cut to take out a tumor that was coming in the way of the person's li- life span so yes there is injury there will be stitches there will be pain and they will need to take pain killers but instead of cursing the doctor the patient is just so happy bringing flowers for the doctor very happy thank you for saving my life why is it, it, it did the surgeon did she not do himsa yes she did himsa or he did himsa but it was to avoid a greater injury this injury was done another example of vishesha dharma then there is swadharma which is within the scope of the samanya dharma the samanya dharma is the biggest circle in our discussion inside that you draw a cons- concentric circle then it is vishesha dharma inside that there is swadharma what is your place in the scheme of things where do your talents lie what are your duties what is the nature of your contribution to your fellow beings and mother earth this is swadharma one is born with certain blessings certain limitations and how to articulate those blessings how to let those blessings flower is swadharma swadharma also is your own duties to visavi your fellow being you have certain duties towards your family of origin parents etc you have certain duties towards your neighborhood there is let's say a home owners association there are certain duties you are a citizen 
that comes with certain duties you are a son daughter you are a friend you are a sibling you are a mother or a father you are a coworker you are an employer employee you are a student you are a teacher all this is swadharma often what happens because of the jeeva srishti the jeevas own shenanigans and the parallel realities projected by the jeeva the jeeva wants to do something other than what it is meant to do i know i am supposed to do this but i don't feel like it this is what duryodhana said <laughs> when lord krishna told him you know i think you should really brush up on dharma he says janami dharmam i know dharma <laughs> nachame pravrittihi i don't feel like following it janami adharmam cha i know adharma too i know what is not to be done nachame nivrittihi but i seem to be addicted to doing the wrong thing and so dharma is is uh, following these forms of these articulations of dharma all all the time shows an emotional maturity and shows the sankalpa the intentionality to step out of one's parallel reality projected by the rajasik and tamasik vrittis into the realm of sattva sattva and dharma are synonym dharma means doing the right thing in the right place at the right time not an easy thing because as my teacher used to say pujya swami ji used to say everything that we love is either illegal or immoral or has too many calories <laughs> what are we going to do <laughs> this is the sacrifice that was talked about in the verse that i chanted for you this is the sacrifice agre visham eva in the beginning it's like what have i got into i'm following a dharmic lifestyle for who why look at this everyone else is having fun and i am just this boring dharmic person goody two shoes and just following doing the right thing in the right place at the, you know at the right time ho hum here i wanted so hum and that's why i decided to follow a dharmic lifestyle but what i get is ho hum how boring how unnecessary how idiotic this is the in the beginning it has a you know yad agre agre means at the right at the start it is very difficult because you have to give up the things you love in other words you have to give up all the ragas and dveshas the objects of desire drop away when you catch hold of dharma when you embrace dharma they naturally drop away they drop away one in the beginning one deliberately follows dharma and then it becomes a natural part of one's life one grows to such a per person to becoming such a person that one is incapable of crossing or transgressing dharma this is what happened to dasharatha father of lord rama he was very very dharmic satvik person and his wife kaikeyi of ramayana fame or infamy you know the infamous kaikeyi she was not bad at heart and uh, she was actually a very skilled charioteer so once the king had to fight these terrible asuras the story goes and kaikeyi was driving the chariot with the king sitting in the back dasharatha sitting in the back and alas as she was driving the horses driving the chariot the axle of the chariot broke and you see if the chariot topples over that's as good as losing the battle the chariot of the king the commander in chief should be standing up 
and to ensure that she kept on driving reached out from under and then held the two pieces together with her thumb and forefinger so that the chariot would continue going it her fingers just bled she was you know she was still unperturbed so she led dasharatha to victory dasharatha was so touched he said you know i just want to i'm so happy with you i'll give you two boons she said i'll take a rain check i have everything i don't need anything and then come the time for rama's coronation she loved rama like her own son but then what happened <laughs> now we know because we have been studying panchadashi chapter 15 ghora vritti <laughs> sat on her head <laughs> that is what some kind of spell of rajas <laughs> sat on her head she was overpowered by rajas and it was very confusing because one minute Dasharatha left her choosing which sari she is going to wear, which set of jewelry she is going to wear to her son Rama's coronation, and then the the second minute she was having a total fit. She was having a total fit, and she was saying about things like, "Who is this Rama? Why should he? What about my son, Bharata, Tamasik and Rajasik?" She was caught in the grip of these vrittis. and then she had to uh, enter the anger management room of the palace called kopa bhavanam every house should have an anger management corner it's very useful <laughs> and we hear in the ramayana that that the ang- the kopa bhavana was made of some kind of a transparent uh, material so that you could see them there they would be raging and raving and ranting but they could not hurt themselves if they tried to hurt themselves you could go rescue them a safe outlet so there she just you know took off all the ornaments from her hair and she was raging and crying and angry and dasharatha went to console her he she said i want those two boons now i want my son to be coronated boon number 1 and this rama who is just who is loved by everybody should go far away into the forest for 14 years otherwise nobody will accept my son as the king Dasharatha begged her. Dasharatha cried. Dasharatha said, "Let your Bharata be the be the king, but don't send Rama to the forest. My heart is with with this son. I won't be alive without him." He cried. He got upset. He fell at her feet. He cajoled. He begged. He got angry. but if we really look at this from the you know from the kali yuga standpoint if we look at the story we see some very interesting details it being a monarchy the kingdom dasharatha was the executive branch he was the legislative branch he was also the judiciary all three powers are vested in him fact number 1 fact number 2 the boon was given in private after a raging battle just the two of them were there no witnesses all he needed to say was <laughs> shut up lady what boons <laughs> shut up get dressed this is a command from your king get dressed and come down to the courtyard where the you you are holding up the ceremony all he needed to do was say that but he could not bring himself to say that because he knew even though there were no witnesses he knew he had given the boons this is emotional maturity this is a satvik heart now why to have this satvik heart because upon the development or the cultivation of the satvik heart <laughs> is ananda contingent upon that is your ananda is your peace of mind is your happiness your happiness rests on the satvik heart your happiness the extent to which you enjoy a satvik heart is the extent to which you are at peace with yourself 
You see, such a big incentive is given to develop a sattvic heart, is it not? The whole ananda depends on it. So that's why it is agre vishamiva. In the beginning, you have to give up so much. There is sacrifice in following swadharma. I want to do all these things. Somebody can say, but there are two, three small children at home. So I have to put all the uh, ambitions on hold for some time. Raise the children. Because why? That is Swadharma. I am a parent. Maybe the parents want to just travel with a backpack. That is what they want to do. They want to go hiking. They can't. They have to leave it till much later. Or the parents want to do some, you know, some other thing which is not child suitable which is not suitable for the presence of the child. That is how one grows. The presence, see when you get married, there is already an opportunity to be sattvic. Why? Because you have to adjust to another ego. And if it's an Indian marriage, you don't marry the just the person, you marry the entire town which the person comes from. So you adjust to thousands of egos. You give up and the more you give up it feels like visha it feels like poison right then but later on you grow you grow into a happy person swadharma cannot be done without sacrifice vishesha dharma also cannot be followed without sacrifice and samanya dharma also calls for sacrifice Sacrifice is vairagya, giving up. We already saw the first quality of the sattvika vritti is vairagya, renunciation. The more we give up certain penchants, certain notions, certain uh, ways of certain addictions, certain ways of being and doing, the greater is the calmness, the inner calmness. One enjoys a bigness that is really unparalleled. And th that is the, the main incentive to have a sattvic vritti as for example, the, the, this is what the verse number 5 I think uh, points out. Vritti shu eta, e eta su sarvasu in all these vrittis brahmana chitsvabhavata asti we have to add. So in all these vrittis Brahm, the, the chit aspect quote unquote of brahman is very much present chit is there sat is there but only in the shantasu only in the sattvika vritti sukham cha pratibimbati sukham cha pratibimbati in addition only in the sattvika vritti brahman reflects as ananda but brahman is understood as ananda so you want ananda, this is the key to ananda. You want limitless joy, follow the, the, the dharmic train, follow dharma. Satyam vada, dharmanchara, this is the Veda, Taitri Upanishad. Swadhyaya anma pramadaha. This is all a list. This is the first valedictory function after the students graduate from the Gurukula, the Acharya's last address. Very beautiful. It tells one, it tells the student how to have a dharmic life. Satyam Vada. It's simple. Speak the truth. When? Always. Dharmam Chara. Follow Dharma. Swadhyayan ma pramadaha. Don't neglect to do self study of the Veda because that is what is going to keep you out of trouble. Follow the duty towards society. Prajatantum ma vyavachetsihi. Raise good citizens and offspring. Unless, of course, you are becoming a sannyasi. Like this, the whole, and then it also says what to do when you don't know what to do. Call some people who are dharmic and who are known in the world as such. Ask them how to behave. Very, very beautiful. More we'll see in the next class. Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate 
ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು